Welcome to Second Tech, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Amid concerns over the cost of South Africa's new nuclear build program, ESCOM has said it may be able to help fund the program. Keith Campbell joins us to discuss the latest developments. Hi Keith. ESCOM has indicated that it may be able to help fund the new nuclear build program. How does it plan to do this? Well basically the ESCOM argument is that they've achieved financial stability and that this now provides them with the basis both to accrue their own cash reserves and to be able to undertake uh, significant borrowing. Uh, they say that uh, the financial stabilization they've achieved uh, allows them to go forward with the current uh, borrowing program of 60 billion rand a year and that within 10 years by uh, 2026 they should have accumulated cash reserves of more than 150 billion rand and they also point out that the profitability has gone up significantly. So they're optimistic that the financial side of their business is look, has been stabilized and is looking good going into the future and they're expecting to uh, experience growth in income and growth in profits and to be able to fund this uh, to a considerable degree themselves. It also believes the lessons learned on its current build program places it in a good position to help develop the new nuclear power plants. How so? Well, it uh, is, is basically to paraphrase. They wouldn't they wouldn't phrase it like this, but they've learned an awful lot from the screw ups at Madupi and Kusili, uh, and two uh, key points that uh, have been made by the CEO Brian Malefe is that firstly ESCOM waited far too long to launch the programs to build the new coal-fired power station at Madubi and Kusili and then having waited far too long they frantically rushed things and this combination of delay and well improvisation would be the wrong word but uh, trying to do things quickly uh, combined to create the uh, snarl ups which led to the huge cost overruns and delays at these coal fired power stations. So these are two key uh, lessons that I've learned and added to watch they've gone back into history and they reviewed what ESCOM did uh, with Kuburg which of course is the country's first and currently only, heck, it's the continent's first and currently only nuclear power plant. Uh, and what they did then was that Kuburg was built to the same design as a plant being constructed in France. Uh, and that uh, nuclear power plant in France became what they call the reference design for Kuburg. Now, they started building Kuburg before the French plant was finished, but the French plant was in an advanced state of construction before they started work at Kuburg. So they were able to learn a lot of lessons from uh, what was going in France. Kuburg and the French plant were being built by the same French group. So there was easy transfer of uh, experience from the one to the other. And that meant that Kuburg went very smoothly, uh, which I think is generally forgotten today. Uh, now, when it comes to the new nuclear build program, uh, what they're suggesting is uh, uh, basically the same approach, uh, to select a design for which there is a reference plant overseas, which uh, would be in advanced stage of construction and maybe even in operation already so that they can then transfer the lessons from the construction to South Africa and to choose one design uh, for all the nuclear reactors uh, to build what they call a fleet of nuclear power plants all to the same design and to use uh, roughly uh, 
I think you can say, off-the-shelf technology, uh, which in this case uh, would mean uh, the latest generation of technology, uh, but not the next generation of technology, which is being worked on now. The, the current latest generation of technology, and this is what is being offered to South Africa by all the potential vendors, is what is called Generation 3 or Generation 3 Plus. Uh, some nuclear experts say there's no difference, that Generation 3 Plus is just a marketing uh, difference from Generation 3, but that, that's the latest generation. The next generation, now under development, is Generation 4. So the implication is that South Africa would go for Generation 3 or Generation 3 Plus, depending on your view of the terminology. Uh, these plants are now in, under construction around the world by all the vendor companies. In fact, the Russians have commissioned their first Generation 3 Plus uh, nuclear reactor, nu uh, nuclear power plant, uh, and the others should come into service in the next uh, few years in various countries. And on top of that, they also point out there's a lot more competition in the market than there was when Kuberg was built. So they have potential uh, vendors from the US, from France, from Russia, from China, from South Korea, uh, and even from India. Uh, so the, they have much, there's much greater competition out there for the contract. CEO Brian Malefe has also stressed the urgent need to progress the nuclear program. Why is this? Malefi's argument is if the country does not build these new nuclear power plants, then it will suffer a major energy crunch around 2035, uh, just as the country suffered a major energy crunch uh, a few years ago because of ESCOM's failure to build new power stations when they should have been built. So there's a, much, there's a lot of argument about this. Uh, with people saying that the uh, forecasts of economic growth uh, do not support such a hu huge energy requirement. On the other hand, international experience shows if you want economic growth, you've got to grow your energy supply faster than your, um, than your expected economic growth. And if you lock your energy growth into your expectations of economic growth, you're actually putting a straitjacket on economic growth and preventing faster economic growth if, for example, circumstances change and permit such faster economic growth. But as I say, basically, uh, it comes down to his argument is that the country is going to need this energy in 2035, and nuclear is the best way to provide this baseload energy for 2035 and beyond. Bearing in mind also that nu nuclear power plants, generation three plus nuclear power plants, will operate for at least 60 years and maybe 80 years. So though the big problem with nuclear is the costs are all up front, when you uh, work out the long-term costs of nuclear, uh, over the whole lifespan of a plant, uh, they do come down substantially. And that is also why uh, I think ESCOM believes that electricity from nuclear plants over the life of the program will actually be quite cheap. Thank you. That's the second take show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.